Hi and welcome to Biz Today. I am Nazreen Ibrahim. Biz Today is your weekly edition of all things business. We profile successful entrepreneurs. We take a look at the days or the current business topics that are trending and take key learnings from them. And then we also look at the events diary so that you can get your networking game going. Now, as you know, on Biz Today, we are commemorating female founders and female experts as August is Women's Month. So in studio today, to kick off our commemoration, we have Priya Hassan, Executive Director of Women of Africa. She's built quite an empire of different businesses, all dedicated to different industries that are rather strong. So it's going to be incredible to find out about her story. And then we've also got Barsha Reddy, MD of Access Ads, but also the marketing executive behind a brand new women's organization that's going to be launched in August called the Professional Business Women's Association of South Africa. And that will be coming up in the show. We also got your events diary, so don't miss that out. Our entrepreneur of the week on Biz Today is an amazing, incredible lady who's done very, very well throughout the years. You know, August is Women's Month this, this month on Biz Today. So we've got in studio to inspire you, Priya Hassan, Executive Director of Durban-based Women of Africa Fuels and Oils, which is one part of the company, displayed high energy of her own by empowering to the forefront of BE Achievers at the 10th Metropolitan Oliver Empowerment Awards. So, I mean, that's just one of the recognitions that she's received, which she's going to tell us about more about. Women of Africa Investments, which is um, a holding company, WOA, is a woman-owned, woman-managed, black economic empowerment investment holding company. And it focused on meeting the above challenge. And the above challenge is obviously looking at the different sectors that are quite challenging. And we've got Priya in studio who's going to talk to us now about that. You know, Priya, when I was looking through your resume and your extensive career history, I couldn't be helped but be overwhelmed by the number of things that you've done uh, to date and the investments that you made in rather tough industries. I mean, we were just reading your bio now, but I think you're going to take us a bit through that. So welcome to Biz Today. Thank you for having me. I'm quite excited to meet you and meet the organization and inspired by the work you do yourself. I appreciate you saying that. That's actually so, it's not just humbling, but I, I think I need to do even much more hearing that from such an established businesswoman such as yourself. And you're going to tell us a bit more about your history and your career and the journey that you've been on. So how would you describe Priya Hassan? Fearless. I would like to think fearless. Mm -hmm. um, I started like any woman starts at the bottom. I believe that educating myself was very important. And when I left university, well, when I left school, I decided I wanted to be a lawyer. LA Law was my favorite series at that time. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> you can never be as old as I am. No, LA Law and Law and Order. But is this a show to be talking about series? I don't know. <laughs> yes, LA Law. Um, and it, you know, you look at TV and you think, wow, that is where I want to be. This is the thing I want to do. And you go and you try and get it done. But it started with a simple idea, and that is wanting to be this high, highly energetic, highly powered lawyer. I realized quickly that the legal fraternity, whilst it had all its challenges and its energy and its beautiful rewards was not something that I wanted to do. I wanted to make a meaningful impact to society. Yeah. And in order to do so, you have to establish equity. You have to have a brand yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to have an income. And Women of Africa was born. It started with simply gaining knowledge from industries like ABSA, Standard Bank. I, w I came from the mining sector. Yeah. I was also part of the Transnet group. and. Gaining that experience, I believe, has made me strong and more experienced as a woman, understanding that we have to learn from each other, with each other, and grow more women to develop ourselves. But I believe in one thing. Mm -hmm. You will give more and receive more only if that is your belief. If you give less, you will receive less. So the more impact you make on society, empowering women, empowering children, empowering those around you, yeah. I believe you will grow in leaps and bounds. And yes, I've really lived, but this is Priya Hassan. And that's, um, that's such a wonderful, I think, inherent philosophy that you've just outlined. Yeah. And that's really necessary for people to understand and to grow within themselves because I was speaking with someone recently and exactly what you've been explaining and saying, that women are not supporting other women enough 
in their benches. I mean, we, I know you spoke about this just earlier, saying that it's sometimes we are quick to say as women in business that it's men who are bringing us down. But I know we're going to explore that a bit more later in the conversation. Priya, you're an advocate. Advocate Priya Hassan. Yes. So that's sort of, that was the beginning of your, um, your career path or your journey. I mean, what, what prompted you to choose this type of designation and was it the beginning of an entrepreneurial career or how did that happen? What, what, what happened when you decided to study? God, I think it was by simply default. Yeah. Uh, I indicated that legal was the route I wanted to go, but I must tell you, the one thing that has made me certain in life and made me very proactive is having a legal background. Understanding contracts for me and unpacking a deal, understanding mezzanine level funding, going to an organization, putting together a proposal, it has come as second nature. Gosh, that is brilliant because I think everybody would want that particular skill set to be able to understand the legal legalese behind the things that they're signing their lives away on almost. It has given me a competitive edge. Mm. Things that you define as truly something that you would take for granted mm -hmm. coming from my fraternity is something that any business person allocates a third party and looks at their risk and, and reviews their contract and reviews their deal structure. So for me, what has made me as successful as well is being able to act on time within a framework where I'm in control of any deal. I think that's also important. Understanding that you are in control of your own destiny. Yeah. Nobody defines your path. It is predetermined you walk a path but you are in control somewhat. As a woman, we're in control of our homes. <laughs> we're in control so we're of not our, of our business. <laughs> we need to be in control of, of our business. Yes, Absolutely. take accountability. You're watching this today and we've got Entrepreneur of the Week, Priya Hassan in studio, who's inspiring us with her story. August is Women's Month, so for the rest of this month, you'll be meeting and learning about the stories of very inspirational women. And Priya, you know, I'm listening to your story now and also wondering at which point, because there's a point in anyone's career journey or career path where they're understanding that I want to now own my time and I don't want to have to build somebody else's dream. So at which point did you say to yourself, I'm ready to do this and I also want to build my own dream but also inspire others? I think it started in 2001. Yeah. I woke up one morning and my home was broken into and my nanny was murdered in my home. It was a time in my life where I realized that if I wanted to be able to have a family, I had to ensure that I gave them the same values that I had. You know, we grew up with our mums. They inspired us, they motivated us. They've actually created who we are today, right? Yeah. We try to be these business women and at the same time we try and develop communities and we try and develop children and women. And in that way, we somehow forget about our children. And in all of that chaos, I had forgotten. And I was reminded by God that this is what you're actually born for first and foremost. Yeah. And it brought me down to earth. I sat back and said, the only way in which to actually bring up my kids and do something meaningful is to have a business. And so it started there. That's interesting you say that because the common debate is that women who run businesses obviously are now challenged by meeting the needs or demands or that balance between family and running an empire, so to speak. Okay. So it's wonderful that you say that because now it casts our perspective or people's perspectives about being a businesswoman and being uh, a woman who runs her home and manages that in a different light. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. There what is, is no such thing as a balance. And this you is true, will... actually. I'm yeah. glad you're saying oh, this. Yes. Take it from a woman mm -hmm. that is being there, done that. There is no such thing. Don't aim for that because you're never going to achieve that perfect balance. Yes. You will always give attention to what needs it the most, whether it's your business, whether it's your family, whether it's your husband, whether it's your parents, whether it's your siblings, or just your general community. Yeah. You're going to focus on what is demanding your most attention. Like you said, this is Women's Month giving back to women, ensuring we speak about our fears and our weaknesses and sharing our strengths and helping inspire, drive, motivate and empower women is what we do this month. I've chosen that. That's right. It means I will give up time with my kids this month. It means I better have my act together at home. But I run my home like I run my business. I can tell you what my kids had for breakfast today and I can tell you what they're having for lunch. Yeah. And, you know, it is so important. It's important to know be knowledgeable. 
because knowledge, I told you earlier, is power. Absolutely. And you know, it makes me think that if we're, everyone has the same 24 hours in the day, but if we're able to plan properly, which I think is, you wonder sometimes, and I had this experience today, you wonder, well, I know what's on my to-do list, but it's not necessarily meeting the time or the agenda it should be. So what's, what's sort of going wrong in that process? And I think you've encapsulated that really well by, and, and the thing that comes out from that is the planning and yes. plan and plan and plan some more, yes. right? Yes, and, and understand that your plan will change daily. It will change by the second, by the minute. Be flexible, accommodate that. You know, everything that you're meant to be doing is because you need to have that experience and, and you've been, you need to actually then lead away for someone at some point in time. Mm -hmm. You are put here for a reason. And you need to understand those reasons. Once you have that philosophy, you have that vision, you have your goals, you will go, go out there and you'll achieve it. But in the same light, don't try and plan for things that will come as an emergency because you yeah. cannot create a plan for an emergency immediately. So you as women, to. yes. Except that. That's what men do so well, right? If they decide yeah, tomorrow actually, they're playing actually, golf, they get on a golf course <laughs> and they play golf. As women, we... When have we're we thinking about this decide tomorrow, today, <laughs> that we're going to go and have a spa day, or we're just going to go and have dinner. Yeah, we plan weeks in advance, if not months. And I, I think we like, in all our chaos, we like total organization. Mm -hmm. But it need not be that way. Live life, take every minute, and maximize it to your best potential. I really like that. I've taken a lesson from that. So. May it be that I actually implement that. Now, Priya, I want to talk more about your business. Yes. Um, when you initially identified this is what I want to do with Women of Africa, it's a holding company. You have different entities within that. Yes. They're all focused on specific um, industries like mining, oil, fuels. Um, you need a one million rand startup, <laughs> fund, startup yes. capital. Is that right? It did. Tell us the story behind that. One million rand is uh, that quite was a lot. Fuels and oils division. Quite a lot when of money at, it at was that time. At that time, yes, we're talking back in two thousand and six. So fuels and oil. So give us a, a quick run through of all the different divisions. Okay, so we have a. We started as a logistics company. Yeah. We specialized in warehousing, distribution, railroad, uh, clearing and forwarding, and then we moved on to the fuels and oil sector because yeah. fuels was a huge component mm. of your logistics business. It, yeah. It's probably 30% of your business currently. We wanted to control that somewhat and the only way was to start a fuels and oils division. And from that we started an engineering division. So we wanted to specialize predominantly in electrical and mechanical engineering. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, we grew into the investment structure yeah. which basically is your shareholding company that invests in shares in other entities, not right. just from an empowerment level, but more from a women transfer of skills perspective. That's interesting. I'd like us to explore that a bit later because I don't know that many entrepreneurs or startups understand that concept and are able to leverage that enough. Okay, sure. And then I wanted to do a simple exercise in terms of looking at the market on construction. Yeah. Um, so it was born double A construction, but it came with hard lessons. I paid my school fees. And I'm sure you have, because I the industries you were listing off engineering, yeah. fuels, construction, seem quite tough yeah. and male dominated. It is. I've been to the mines of Consempa in Zambia, to DRC, to Lumbumbash, to going through rivers and traveling alone yes. and trading in commodities and yeah. I've literally done it all, seen it all, be wherever I needed to go. Do you know what motivated and had driven me at that time was, I looked at a sector and I saw that as women we stand back and say we can't do it. Mm. We don't know how. And we think that everything comes in a book. But learning from each other, sitting by and listening to each other is what will give you the knowledge you need. I said the best way for a business to start for women to get into business is to sit with any individual they want to learn from or that inspires them and understand how they've started like I'm explaining to you. Yeah. Unpack it and say okay so what drove you? How did you get there? But going back to that, being to the streets, came back and then decided I wanted to start a fuels and oils division but the fuels and oils division was in petroleum, gas, 
LPG, IPG, lubes, and I needed to put up a guarantee. I went to my bank and my bank declined me. And I called the bank and they didn't know me and I called. They declined you, which is the, the, I think everybody's common story. They declined you, but from <laughs> yeah. what I know, you said to them, well, I'd like you to keep declining me because this is what I'm going to do. I'll what happened? And I went back and I went back and I went back. And you went back. And I went back. And that's what business is about, right? Knocking on those doors and knocking on those doors till somebody opens it. Right. And that's all you need is a slight opening and you get in there and people will bank you. They bank your energy. They bank your motivation, your drive. That's true. Apart from just a business plan. Mm. Because don't be mistaken. You need a very good business plan. And the numbers need to be in order, right? It has to be. You need a sound idea. You need to project that. I went back and I said to the bank, which was absurd at the time, and it still is absurd. Yeah. You don't know me, but I know you. You don't know my business, but I know yours, and you're going to bank me. And I was lucky, because the man that answered that phone at that time called me, came to Durban, understood my business, and banked me. That's an incredible story, because I think people's idea around funding, and you know, we had a focus on funding in July, right. and covered some of the, the different challenges that people face, particularly startups, who may not necessarily have the experience, and in most instances, don't have the collateral to be able to go to bank and say, yes, you know, can you back me? Because I've got skin in the game, so to speak, and, and let's do this. But it's not about standard, ordinary funding. It's about ent entities like your CEDA, your small enterprise development agency, going to them, understanding them, trade investment, causal and Natal. They give you access to funding. You have various entrepreneurial chambers here from your Shinduka Black Umbrellas to your ABSA Entrepreneurs Division yeah. that fund small scale businesses as well as national opportunities. You need to know these entities. You need to get to know the people behind those desks. Again, the you knowledge need, is power. Yes, go and approach them. Nothing will stop you. Nothing should stop you. Mm. And you know, it's not your traditional funding these days. Let's be honest, because that's very expensive. Yeah. It is your non-traditional approach to business that's going to best work for you. And also identifying those opportunities, which you can, I think, a lot of collaborative opportunities. Yes, right. and collaboration must come from other women as well. Mm -hmm. It's organizations, like you know, like the Business Women's Association, which is a big part of my life, Women in Energy South Africa, all of those energies, proudly South Africa. You need to network, get to know other women in business, yeah. and promote your brand, talk about it, access their network, leverage that. It is simply not about just going to a bank. What, what I'm hearing from you quite a lot is that women now need to understand, number one, knowledge is power. Number two, network the hell out of your brand. Absolutely. And number three, don't be afraid to show support to other female entrepreneurs and share that knowledge. So also have that, that knowledge sharing or the knowledge transfer, because I think you can only build a better network, but also know that the challenges you are facing are the very same challenges someone else is facing. And the way you can address them is to look at them together. So have that pool of shared knowledge. You summarized that very well. Suffice for one thing. Mm. The fourth is be, be prepared to have a corporate social responsibility plan. It's not just a written plan. Yeah. It must take your heart. It must take your soul. It must take your spirit. It must take your commitment. It, I promise you, the universe is very strange in that way. As much as you put into it is as much as I told you you will get out of it. That's right. So don't get into business just because you want to make a profit. That's right. Get into business because you want to make a difference to people's lives. I think we're all social entrepreneurs at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, right? I, you know, I don't believe I'm a social entrepreneur, although a lot of people would like to call me that. A huge chunk of me says these days, I spend 60% on my charitable functions and 40% of my time on my business. Yeah. And it gives me a great sense of satisfaction. It's not about, like I said, it's not about the profits, but it is a reality that at the end of the day, you are measured by what you leave as a legacy in your name, mm -hmm. not by what's in your bank account. People will remember how you made them feel, not necessarily who, what, you did. what you did or what you said. Absolutely correct. Priya, you identified, I mean, your holding company have, has 
different entities, and they're in particular um, industries like pharmaceuticals, mining, engineering. How did you identify these particular industries and, and thought these would be good to invest in? The pharmaceutical business is a new business to us. Right. We have not developed and grown it the way we'd like to. We started by default. Our corporate social responsibility plan included bringing in kits to test for um, tuberculosis, yes. HIV. and That's across Africa, right? Yes. That's how we actually started the business. But I have not paid 100% attention to grow that brand in the way in which I want to yet. Yes. And I'm going. that is my next focus in the next 12 months. It's what I need to do. But we have all the partnerships and we have all the products and we have all the branding and we have all the licensing we need. Which is brilliant because I think those are the key um, elements you needed to get that business up and running in any event. But it will, it will be in Africa as opposed to South Africa because I I know that that's where the future yeah. is. Uh, absolutely, well. of course. And the other industries, what I think Tim, I know we're sort of laboring on this point slightly, but what interested you particularly in those? Because we mentioned earlier, we talked about how male dominated and tough and driven these industries are. And so as a woman, I mean, you decided I'm going to acquire every bit of knowledge I can yeah. and maneuver my way. And I'm sure it must not have been easy. I, nothing that is worth fighting for is ever is easy. easy. So, um, was it just about I wanted to acquire knowledge? No, I think it what it must pique your interest. It must make you excited. Yeah. It must make you want to learn more. If it's not, then it's not really something you should explore. So, and it's each one for themselves. Yeah. You know, what may make me passionate may not necessarily drive you. And I discovered very fast and furious that those are the sectors that I wanted to be in. Whether it was just because men were in it or not is another thing. But I, I soon started finding out that that was one of the biggest hurdles is that men ordinarily also are very fearful of letting women in. Because mm -hmm. once we have control of something, well, let's just be honest. I, I he think so. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't think control lies with the, the other side anymore. Yes, it is true. Uh, you know, it's not about our ability to share. It's our, about our ability to also accumulate. Yes, this is true, <laughs> right? Just like we like collecting little items of jewelry, we like to collect in terms of accolades. Yeah. You, you know, when I look at it and I think about it, the processes that we've exposed ourselves to as women of Africa, all these beautiful recognitions and rewards from most influential women to being the finest Anderson Youngs, most exceptional entrepreneurs, finalists in that category, and, and all these beautiful rewards that came with it. It wasn't about putting ourselves through a process and interrogating our business. It was about saying to the men that played in those very same sectors, and yes, we can do it. Yeah, yes, actually. we will do it, and you shall not stop us. Mm. But it, it's not a fight, it's not a race, it's not a competition. It was something you did for yourself. I like that you said that because I think sometimes also women in business might understand their, I would say, reason for being in that particular industry to be something that it shouldn't be. So it's, it's almost like uh, I'm going into male-dominated industry, but I'm going to do this. Which now makes me think of my next question for you is, you've been in business for I, s I would say over 15 years now? Myself? No, it's been 13. So about, we'd say nearly 15 years, mm -hmm. that in, in its entirety that you've managed to build such a, a great empire. What are some of the most difficult challenges you faced and, and how did you handle those? The first is obviously making people believe in you and your brand. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot. It, you have to open yourself up. You have to let people in. And when you let them in, you you got to ensure that they don't cloud your thinking and true. take you off your path from yeah. what it is you want to do, because it's so easy. The second is making sure you keep your ethics and integrity intact. Right. In our age, in our community, in our time, I say to my staff, and I mean what I say, no business is better than a corrupt business. And it is hard to play in that space. It is not easy, but you rather do it because the one second that you default will be the 10 years of your life that people mm. are going to remember. That's right. So that is a challenge that people are facing and it is a challenge that we all face. The third is access to funding and I told you how we overcame that. 
It is not with ease, but it is with trying, and it is certainly with perseverance. Fourth is being able to convince other women that sometimes you are also worth investing in. Mm -hmm. And you alluded to this earlier, finding the right mentor. It's easy to identify with a man that you want to be like, but is it as easy to identify with the women that you want to be like mm -hmm. and to get her to believe in you and to tell her, let her tell you your, her secrets and show you the way? It isn't. But I have learned from some of the most successful women out there. They have inspired me and taught me and held my hand. And I must acknowledge them and pay homage to them and say to them, you know what, without you, I would not be where I am. That's right. And the fifth is probably, you know, it is not easy to go to an organization and say, I want to be part of you, but do that. Go to the organizations in your community, in your sector, from the petroleum sector, if you want to be in it, to the pharmaceutical sector, to mm -hmm. your freight forwarders association, because they're in the transport sector, to wherever it is you want to play in. Yeah. Go to those associations, get yourself onto that database and learn from them. Make that time. And finally, I'm going to say the other challenge, and it's always going to remain a challenge, is finding that balance. Mm. My mom said something to me and I learned from that and she said never be guilty about where you are and what you've become. And as women I want to say to you don't ever apologize for being a businesswoman. Look back and say it's okay. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be a mother 24-7. I don't have to be a perfect wife. I don't have to be the perfect employer. I'm atrocious at managing people. I believe that everybody has got to manage themselves. Yeah. So, and, you know, I think those are important lessons that I've learned along the way. What final words? Because it sounds almost, I think viewers watching will have taken away so many lessons from you. But what final words can you give aspiring entrepreneurs, particularly female entrepreneurs, who are thinking, I think I can do this, but how do I do it, you know? Be the change you want to see. Whether it's in your government, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your organization, you must practice what you preach. If you want to see women successful, start by helping other women. If you want to see women in boardrooms as opposed to standing at the foot of the door, open those doors if you're in the pound seat. If you want to see women in business, support more women in business. If you want to see enterprise development, understand what that means and go back and start somewhere from your stationary supplier to your person that prints your business cards That's right it. down to the person that does your tailoring. Empower. And empowerment does not mean enrichment. Mm -hmm. It means, like I said to you, transferring skill, transferring knowledge, transferring your time and making that effort. And that's incredible. So I think we can rewrite um, the saying, if you want something done, get a busy person to do it. Maybe if you want something done, get a female entrepreneur to do it. We could almost rewrite that statement just for women's month. Absolutely. Priya, thank you so much for joining us in studio. It was. It was just amazing for me to sit across from you. I'm sure if I've you know, imbibed so much of your energy and knowledge, our viewers can only have learned so much more. It was only a pleasure and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate you coming and joining us in studio and I'm sure you will be back very, very soon. So Ambas, today, you know, we've, we're celebrating Women's Month. It's the month of women in August and we kick off our commemoration of women by featuring Priya Hassan, Executive Director of Women of Africa. When we come back, we'll be speaking with a brand new women's organization that's launching in Durban. Wow.